I'm Jen. And I'm Joe. And we're Jen and Joe. On, on the, the go. go. So, Jen, what are we doing this time? We're going to give you a recap of our um, Walt Disney World vacation this past week. So, a lot of this is, obviously, if you're watching our channel, you know we've done these live updates uh, every day since uh, we got down here in Florida. And we're going to have a lot of videos coming up that will kind of go into all these different things that we've been doing. But we wanted to do a recap with some information so it's a little uh, more timely, I guess, a little yeah. more, um, you know, I guess, current. Up to date. Up to date, yeah. But we wanted to talk about our week overall. Um, I mean, we, we had a good time, first off. We had a really good time. The weather was beautiful. We stayed at the Contemporary Resort for six nights. The hotel was lovely. It is the rooms in the garden wing which are the same rooms in the tower, but we haven't stayed in the tower in a couple of years. They're showing their age. Um, I do think they need a bit of a refurb. It yeah. was they were clean. Yes. Um, um, they they're they're showing their age. They're showing you definitely know. the best thing about the rooms there are the size. I mean, they're I such like such a nice size. I like the idea that it's kind of a sort of a retro '60s kind of feel. Me too. Um, it's got the contemporary kind of theming I guess if if you're looking at retro 60s but the contemporary is looking a little dated so but the rooms are just a great size and it did it was very very clean when we first got in so mm -hmm. that was definitely a plus um, the I, parks were definitely um, a lot more crowded than July Joe and I have no idea what the official capacity is but you could feel it this time all oh, four definitely. parks yeah. Um, and then we did notice too, uh, as we were going through the day on Wednesday in Magic Kingdom, we got to about noon and it got a lot busier. And then we looked around and it's like, what are all these kids doing here? Shouldn't, Shouldn't they, they be, be at school? home? E-learning? Something, anywhere. Well, they bring the kids down to do the schoolwork in the hotel room until they get done around noon. And Have then, lunch and go to the parks. Let's go to Magic Kingdom, kids. So the crowds were a lot um, busier in the afternoons. Overall, they were busier, but they were busier in the scooters, afternoons. scooters, people walking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was... It was very... Everyone wore their masks. We didn't see anyone not wearing their masks, but at all... Well, we, we actually skipped Animal Kingdom today, but Epcot... Magic Kingdom, we went to twice, and Hollywood Studios. There, It was difficult to social distance three of the four days. Yes, I The agree. first day at Magic Kingdom was probably the best with crowds. And we were there on weekdays, which are supposed to be better than weekends. Um, it was crowded. It was really which, crowded. Pretty much what that means is that the crowds are back at Disney. Yeah. So if your thought is to maybe try to get down here within the next couple of months to take advantage of the low Those crowds. Those days are over. Yeah, they yeah. don't have fast passes. Overall, the waits for the rides uh, were down compared to at any point in time in recent memory. Uh, wait times, if you can get on uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in 30 minutes, you know the crowds are lower. That's true. But that said, it still was kind of busy and crowded for what you would expect for a, a pandemic and the fact that they were, were wearing these masks and were supposed to social distance. Um, we waited 90 full minutes for Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway in Hollywood Studios. Yeah, so we definitely waited the 90 minutes for that. Uh, Seven Dwarfs, we rode it twice. The first time was 45 minutes for a wait. The second was 30. Um, but Two really, different days. For Seven Dwarfs, that's, that's, that's not bad. That's no. not bad at all. Yesterday morning, if we would have gone to Animal Kingdom early at opening, um, Everest, even this morning, Everest was five minutes. So at, at certain points in time, early in the day, yesterday and today, Everest was a walk-on. Dinosaur was a walk-on. Yesterday, times were much lower for Flight of Passage, 20 minutes, and Navi River was like 10 or 15. So the thing we noticed, too, is that for a lot of the wait times, they said this, but they were really this. The times of actually waiting were much less than the times reported mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. you know, the wait time. Um, so that was kind of odd that they are not getting the wait times right. Are they trying to do something psychologically where they say, or, you know, you're going to think, oh, it's 40 minutes, but then it's really only 20. Mm -hmm. Oh, how great was that? I don't know. I don't know. It's My just opinion not... is Disney has to do something because they've taken so much away that they have to make the guests feel like they're getting something, something. Because you're still paying the same amount to get into the parks for less hours and less experiences. So it's just kind of sort of that bait and switch. You're, you you get into the line being prepared to spend 40 minutes 
and eh, okay. But then when it's only 20, that's great. Oh, excellent. And there was the exact same thing that happened with us on Seven Dwarfs, mm -hmm. uh, 40 minute wait. Well, that's not too bad. We got on it in 30. Oh, and you can't- Actually, we got on and rode it in 30. In 30. And you can't pick your row on any of the rides. You just have to go where they mm -hmm. assign it just simply because of the way they're cleaning. But we got the last row on they're Seven They're loading Dwarfs. more more cars. Um, we also noticed in restaurants that they are, a family eats, they leave, they wipe down the table, they are not letting them sit anymore. And then they are immediately sitting another family. Meaning seat. they're not letting the table sit empty and to let it dry. Right. They're, they're wiping it down and boom, next one's Yeah, out. I can't yeah. tell you how many tables that we even sat at that were still wet. Today. Yeah, yeah. just was today. At, at homecoming, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was wet. I'm like, eh, So if yeah, you're yeah. skeevy and, and worried about um, the tables being cleaned. Or just anything with just people being too close. Yeah. Just I'll, wait. Yeah, don't come. wait. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, mean, I guess it, I don't know what you're going to wait for because they're just going to pick up from now on. I mean, well, which is crowds. a great thing. We're happy that Disney is picking up capacity and um, opening more things up. But at the same time, yeah. as a guest, you're 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 paying for less. It's good for the people who work here that mm -hmm. have to get back to work. They've been sitting furloughed for months and months and months. And we talked to so many people. Um, there were maybe one or two that actually continued working. Well, one that we spoke to mm -hmm. that continued working, but others came back sooner than others because of seniority. Um, but there are people, the one waitress who, um, her daughter was a waitress mm -hmm. at uh, Plaza, did you say Plaza mm -hmm. restaurant? She's still sitting at home because she just doesn't have enough seniority to come back. So yeah, you definitely want these things to open again, but at the same time, if you are concerned about the virus and you don't want to be around people um, this close to other people, then this is not the then time don't for you come. to be visiting. No, nope, just wait, just wait. Um, another thing we noticed is in July, um, the service that we had in the restaurants, every restaurant was impeccable, perfect. Couldn't say enough about the CMs. Um, the first couple days of our trip, and we'll get into that more when we do our separate videos. The first couple days, some of the CMs were anything but magical. Oh, no magic. No magic. No, no. magic. Um, but, but the middle to end, it was much better. So, I mean, yes. yes. But I think probably uh, Michael, who's the waiter at Narcusi's, was phenomenal. really, really great. He's been working for Disney since 1972. 1972 that's amazing to me so that was really very cool um but yeah the the really was only the first couple days so many other people throughout the week were, were nice fabulous and kind. yeah 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 we so, did quite a few cast compliments yeah yeah we did um the other part of it which is kind of interesting and ironic when it comes to the shopping um, oh yeah so wednesday at magic kingdom we decided to stop in the Emporium on the way out, and that store was jam-packed with people. If you're going to try to get people to social distance with markers on the floor and all the rest of it, you need to count and, and keep track of We did of not see anybody counting who was into going in store. and coming out. There were so many people in the Emporium. And I work in a hospital, and I'm like, whatever, it's fine. I got out of that store because I didn't want to be that close to people. I was feeling claustrophobic. Oh. And and I'm not skittish about the virus. I never have been. Um, I just felt claustrophobic. There were so many people in that store. It was store. odd to me. So then yesterday we decided let's take a ride out to the uh, Florida Outlet Mall on Vineland. So we wanted to go to the Disney Character Warehouse. We've done a couple of those videos. We thought let's go and do an update because they just opened. So we get there, you have to um, put your name on a list. It's the virtual queue. The virtual queue. So they'll text you when it's your turn to go in. And so we were looking, we put our name on the list. We were looking, it's like they were letting maybe five, six, seven people in the store at a time. I think That's seven is high. I think it was about five. That's it. We're looking. It's like, okay, so you can let the mob of people into the Emporium on Wednesday, but Friday at the Character Warehouse, it just doesn't track it doesn't make sense and after a half hour we went up to one of the people with the virtual queue and said hey just where are we on the list so we have an idea of how much longer it's going to oh, be and i mean she was scrolling yeah. and scrolling so, so took, we're like forget it we left yeah we left but you got the text it was an hour and 40 minutes that uh that went we by did we did we get the text, the text yeah. yeah hour and 40 minutes so just to get into the character warehouse uh, needless to say we didn't get that video so 
Oh well, what are you gonna do? And we were um, supposed to be at Animal Kingdom yesterday and today, and we decided to skip it because the crowds, it, they were just, and again, not because of COVID, I'm, we're not nervous about that. Um, we just wanted a break. Yeah, we spent it, time with friends instead and just did a few other things. The, um, the, the, the parks were just too crowded for me to have an enjoyable time. It, but it's better than at the peak. That's the whole thing though. I mean, it is, but it's still more crowded for what it is. <laughs> and I'm glad you say that now, because when it gets back to the peak of where we were before, yeah. um, you know, I, I just, if they're going to continue with the reservations for the parks, it would be nice if they can just cap it off. If they kept it to this level, let's just say it's this level now, going forward, this would be acceptable and okay, because you could at least get on most everything. The only thing that's a real stick in the mud that, that is, it's, gets people upset is that darn rise of the resistance the whole so our friends tried to get on it this is now the second time or maybe even the third time they tried to get on this thing and they can't because they're they're there and they're trying to get the boarding group the boarding pass and they get locked out so they tried that at 10 o'clock on Thursday so we're in line for Mickey and Minnie mm -hmm. right at 2 o'clock right so I'm on my phone thinking I'm gonna get something perhaps maybe you know we can work something out and they can take we're going to give them our yeah. magic band so they would have a chance so they to can ride just it get a chance to ride it so anyway so i'm on exactly two o'clock it comes up it's got your name my name and steve's name i deselect steve hit join this whole process takes 10 seconds 10 seconds boom gone nothing's available 10 seconds and so i went right at two o'clock the point of that if you are going to hollywood studios thinking that you are going to ride rise of the resistance and that's why you're that's going, why that's I what you want to I do? I would not do it. Uh -uh. Your chance of getting on that ride is um, pretty slim. I'd say you got a better chance going to your gas station and buy a lottery card. Yeah. Just get a quick pick, whatever you do for your state I for lottery. I can't tell you how many Mega millions, people, whatever it is, because you got a better chance of winning I than can't, riding freaking Rise of the Resistance. I can't tell you how many people we saw oh, um, at guest pissed, services pissed. upset that they did not get a, a boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. So, I, I mean, the line just wrapped around and around and around and down. So I'm going to say this, and I'm going to try to keep it as positive as I can, but if you're providing service to your customers, you want to try to, you can't make everybody happy, but you want to try to make as many people happy as you possibly can, which means you should do certain things, set them up in a way that will minimize the amount of complaining. And you're always going to get people who complain. I get that. You're always going to get people who are unhappy. Right. But as a company that is renowned, renowned for customer infamous, service. famous for customer service, um, they seem to be failing in certain ways. Sometimes they're little ways, but they seem to be failing. And every time you get something that is going to be irritating to your customer, that's going to give that customer a reason to not come back, to not mm -hmm. give you their money anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps maybe it's just, well, people are coming all the time. It doesn't matter. If you take any one of your customers for granted, you're going to start losing them. And then it's a, it's a domino effect. The, the opposite has occurred in the last 15 to 20 years. You've seen the, uh, you've seen the attendance increase. They've been offering more, sure, but more and more people are coming because they want what Disney is offering. You could say the same about Universal. They want this type of entertainment, this, this vacation package. But if you start doing things that will upset people, the dominoes are going to fall the other way. And then you're going to see fewer people coming down. If I can spend my money, this is a lot of money too. If I can spend my money doing something else, I'll do that instead. And we're huge Disney fans. I mean, yes. we're AP holders. We come down five to six times a year. We we stay in on Disney property. We do the dining plan. We do parks every day. We do after hour events. Um, we love Disney. But I just want everyone to remember, if you are planning a trip, Right now, you are not getting a discount on your passes for the most part. You're paying about $125 a ticket for no extra magic hours before or after the park's official opening. You are not getting fireworks, although that may change because wow. they were testing the Epcot fireworks on September 23rd. May, may, may. Yeah, it I mean, may change come May of 2021. I don't know. <laughs> I don't um, know. I mean, just, right now you're not getting it. You're getting a reduced experience yes, for the definitely. same 
price. So just remember that coming down. We had a great vacation. We always know going in what we're going to get yeah. out of it. So if this is your first time, and this is your um, you know once in a lifetime trip, your one trip every five to ten years. I would not calm down no, right now. Not right now. Not right no. now. Now that said, there are a couple little things that are oh. um, you okay there? Yeah. A couple little things that they're doing that you know make an egg salad out of rotten eggs or what's the saying? How does it go? I don't, um, I don't know that saying. I don't know if that's the correct saying, but they're making the most out of the situation with the character cavalcades. They're that's so cute. That's actually been a nice addition. We saw a whole bunch this trip and at first I wasn't a fan, but now that I've seen quite a few of them, I think they're super cute. You weren't a fan of the idea, but then right. as soon as you saw it, you right. were hooked. And yeah. then um, the resorts, um, it's Channel 74. 74. 74. They are playing happily ever after mm -hmm. the fireworks um, from 6 to 10 p.m. every single night. So if you're in your room and you still want that fireworks what are you doing? experience, get out of here. You can watch it on TV. TV. Photobomb! <laughs> oh my God. That was Joe's sister. That was my sister. She wants to be famous. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, Channel 74. Mm hmm Yes. You can, so you can still watch after. Happily Ever After. <laughs> yeah. And that actually, we actually did. We, we did. We and loved it. Just, it. It's on repeat for, for four hours every night. So we actually had it on and watched it quite a bit. And what was really nice about it is that, for me personally, like you could see all the animations the on the castle, the projections, just amazing. But also, it's just listening to the story, because there is a story to the fireworks yes. show. And not just with the narrator, but the songs. And as you're progressing along throughout all of it, um, when you're there dealing with the crowds and you don't know where to look, you're distracted by the castle, then you're looking at the fireworks. And sometimes it could be too much background noise. You don't hear everything. I got a lot out of watching it uh, just it because too. I was able to appreciate it differently. So anyway, yeah, it was definitely very cool. So anyway, we had a great trip. Um, if you are strictly coming down because you think it's going to be low crowds, don't, don't do that. Don't do, don't don't do, do that. it based on that. Be prepared to be disappointed about uh, something. something. There's going to be something. So if you can come in with more realistic mm -hmm. expectations, you might not be as disappointed and just kind of go with the flow because there are other things that I haven't mentioned that could be irritating. Um, but some of the changes that have occurred just in the last couple of days, like at Epcot with the bakery in Norway, that wasn't open. Now I guess it's going it to open. It just opened today. So I, we actually commented on where you can get the uh, school, school run. run. So um, we also commented at the Grand Floridian that, you know, this is where the band used to sit. They were up there, but then they did Enchanted Rose. Now the band is down here, but they took the stage out and they put a piano with uh, some other chairs and tables. Now you just found out I just 15 read minutes ago on WDW News that um, as of October 3rd um, Disney is getting rid of the Grand Floridian Orchestra which are currently now playing at Hollywood Studios. So yeah. um, sounds like they are going to be gone. Yeah, they were I guess and in the, that makes me so sad. They were in the Beauty and the Beast stage, stage at Hollywood Studios. They've mm -hmm. been playing there, but now they're going to get rid of them all together. I don't know. For us, going into the Grand Floridian, I liked them better when they were up by Enchanted Rose area. Mm -hmm. um, having them down on the main floor. It seemed like a downgrade. It seemed like a downgrade and then psh, out the door. I don't know. I just want to say one more thing too. And you can tell that Disney has rolled back um, because there are no longer any big, beautiful um, floral arrangements oh, yeah, in Yacht and Beach in Club yeah. in the Grand Floridian. Yep. They're gone. Yep. They're gone. So you can tell that Disney is definitely cutting costs. Yeah, yeah. So again, and that's just something that maybe the visitor once every couple of years yep. wouldn't notice, but us coming down a lot, that's something we yeah, did notice. Yeah. And it does. It takes away from that experience. It, it can definitely. So little by little, you lose something if you don't it, realize it that it was. Away. Yeah, if you don't realize that it was there before, because you're only not been missing down a couple anything. Of years, you think, eh, no, it's fine. I don't know. But yeah, if you know it was there and now it's gone, you kind of mourn that loss a little bit. So, yeah, so anyway, we anyway. have a lot to come, um, a lot of videos from this trip. We hope that you guys will tune in and watch them and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because we have a lot to share. And a lot of it is very positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want this really to sound things. doom and gloom. No, I mean, no, no. we really had a great time. Mm -hmm. We're just saying if you're going with um, um, high expectations of low crowds and everything is going to be as it was before the virus hit, 
then you will be disappointed. Right, right. But yeah. we had a great trip and we're yeah. excited to share it with you. And not only was the trip part of it with the Disney part of it fun and really entertaining, it was just nice seeing the friends that we saw. I mean, it it just was. we had, and that helped to make the entire mood for the week better. But we had such a good time again. Uh, no R-rated videos, nope. nothing like that coming up this time. So but... Arianne, Steve, <laughs> Melinda, and R, we <laughs> had so much fun with you yeah. guys. We already miss you so much. So, mwah. So that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Thanks for watching. And tune in for more because we will get back on track with the regular schedule. Yes. Um, I was posting a lot more between the live updates and then also prior to that, just trying to get through videos from the last trip. But yep. we'll get into more of a routine probably Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, so four days a week, mm -hmm. um, 9 a.m. Central Time. So should be pretty consistent regarding that. Uh, so you'll know when to tune in. And thanks again. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Uh